Welcome inside the Mountain West Network Studios. Jesse Kurtz alongside Mountain West football analyst Ted Sunquist here to break down week five in the Mountain West football schedule. We'll talk about the games that pit conference team versus conference team. We'll start with a big one, Utah State and San Jose State, the two newcomers into the league. Utah State coming off that three-point loss at USC. They're 2-2. Two and two. San Jose State went to Minnesota, lost to the Gophers 43-24. Utah State played USC very tough. What did you take away from that performance, a three-point loss against a very good defense? Well, I'll tell you what, most coaches don't play for moral victories. And in this particular case, I know the Aggies went out to SC to win that football game. And the thing is, they could have won it. When you look at it, you go on the road, they come away with confidence knowing they can win anywhere. They've got San Jose State, New Mexico, and UNLV left as away games on their schedule. They've got the defense to do it, but offensively, as powerful as they are behind Chucky Keaton, this was not their best game. They've got to stay on schedule, not effective on first down, put the ball in multiple second down and long situations. They've got to do a better job there. It was their lowest third down conversion rate of the season, 5 of 17. They can't can't go on the road and make mistakes and expect to win. They missed a field goal. They had some penalties. Utah State had seven three and out drives. So as they go forward, coming out of that SC game, a lot of confidence with where the score was and how tough they played them, but a lot of things that they can improve. Okay, San Jose State playing uh, without Noel Grigsby, who was uh, out with a knee injury, but Chandler Jones quietly filled in very nice. Yeah, he really has. Seven receptions and 197 yards, three touchdowns against the Golden Gophers. 20 receptions for 370 yards, an 18.5 average, and four touchdowns over the course of the season. He is the big play go-to guy right now in that Spartan offense on first and second down. That's who they're looking for. 16 receptions. He's shown up big in the fourth quarter. He's got eight receptions late in the game. Three for 15 plus yards. Not a real big guy, 5'11", 174 pounds, but he does know how to run routes and he separates really well from defenders. He has done a great job for that Spartan offense in the pinch. All right, kickoff between the Aggies and the Spartans, 6 o'clock Pacific time, televised on ESPN on Friday night. Utah State, by the way, has won 12 straight conference games wow. dating back to 2011. Moving on to Air Force at Nevada. Air Force coming off a blowout loss against Wyoming Cowboys, 56-23. Nevada did beat Hawaii 31-9. Air Force continues to get carved up on defense, especially in the pass game. What changes have to be made to help negate those problems that they have right now on the defensive side. Yeah, Jesse, they have got to find a way to create some pressure. They've got to do something to get their defenders in that quarterback's face. It's not getting done one-on-one. -on -one. They're going to have to create it on their own. And that's a tough to do when you're playing assignment football with a, against a lot of read option offenses that you're going to see in the Mountain West Conference. But you've got to play the run upfield, create penetration on your way to the quarterback. Mix things up a bit. The linebackers haven't made a lot of plays in pass coverage anyway, so you might as well let them get in there and try to pressure the quarterback. They've only got two sacks in three games. No quarterback hurries. So they've got to do something there. Press on the man. Do some things on defense to make that quarterback guess and, and perhaps get into some mistake situations. The Falcons did beat the Wolfpack last year. And frankly, Nevada struggled against Air Force. Coming off of last week's defensive performance, where they're outstanding against Hawaii, they look pretty dialed in, and I'm sure they're pretty ready for the Falcons to get some revenge from last year. Yeah, I think so. That Wolfpack defense, six turnovers against the Rainbow Warriors. One directly led to a score, picked up a fumble, ran it in. Really put some pressure on Taylor Graham and forced some errant throws. Uh, they were flying around, I thought, forcing the action. They got eight tackles for losses, tackled well, kept things in front of them, and uh, as a unit, I thought, really did a good job in maintaining that Rainbow offense and not letting the big play really uh, hurt them overall. Air Force looking to avoid its first four game losing streak since 2006. Kickoff 5 o'clock Pacific time televised by CBS Sports Network. Moving on to UNLV and New Mexico. UNLV another win. They're now 2-2 two and two on the season. They beat Western Illinois 38-7. to seven. New Mexico is idle. They lost to Pitt a couple of weekends ago. Rebels have lost 23 state straight road games. But they've won two in a row now. How do they get it done on the road? What does it take to be a good road team and get a road win? Confidence. And they've gotten that from these last two wins. They really have. They've played well. They're a confident football team right now, winning over the past two weeks. You've got to go into an opponent's stadium and have the confidence that you can execute your game plan without many mistakes. Not turn the ball over. Right now, they're plus three in the turnover margin over the last two weeks. 
They were minus three the first two weeks. They uh, don't need to have needless penalties. No penalties against Western Illinois and only three in the win over Central Michigan. Come out ready to play from the first snap and withstand inevitable swings and momentum that happened to you on the road. They were down 21 to seven at the half against Central Michigan and they found a way not to come out in the second half and continue to create mistakes. They responded and were able to win that football game. And then this past week, they learned how to play with a lead. They jumped out to a 17 to nothing ha uh, halftime lead and then built upon that to 31 to nothing. So this is a unit that is learning how to win. And they were able to do that at home, but the big test now, like you said, is to go out into somebody else's backyard and beat them up. Last time the Rebels won on the road 2009, it came against the University of New Mexico in Albuquerque. New Mexico did have the bye week. Where did they focus their attention after a tough loss at Pitt? Yeah, you know, the great thing about the Lobos right now is they're playing smart football. They're not making a lot of mistakes themselves. And I like to see that in a team that's continuing to grow and build upon youth. Plus three in the turnover margins. Not a whole lot of penalties as a team overall. Offensively, they have to do a better job on third down. 11 of 38 and well under 30% on third down. Their goal is to win time of possession, and they'll have to throw the ball a little more effectively, I think, in order to do that. 46.3% right now. I know they throw only to supplement their running game. That's what Bob Davies wants to do. They've got to be a little bit more effective. Just a little over five yards per completion right now. And if the running game's not working, they get into some long third down situations and it bogs them down. All-time series between the Lobos and the Rebels tied 10 games apiece. Kickoff 6 o'clock Mountain Time televised by Root Sports also streamed live on the Mountain West Network. Finally, the big game, Fresno State ranked 23rd and 25 in the two polls. They're at Hawaii. Fresno State coming off that great win, an exciting win over Boise State, 41-40. Hawaii 0-3. They lost to Nevada 31-9. Fresno State, of course, riding high after that emotional win. The fans in Fresno excited, the coaches, the players. How do you temper that and make sure you got a long trip to the islands? How do you make sure it's a business trip and you don't feel too good about yourself? There's still plenty of season to go. Well, Tim DeRuiter's played a lot of games out there in Hawaii. He knows how to handle that trip, both from a uh, the scheduling standpoint, logistically, how to get his team ready. He's going to focus on that defense and say, hey, guys, we're 3-0, but we've given up 51, 20, and 40 points. Two of those games are only one-point victory, so there's a lot of work to still get uh, be done. I think he's going to set some game-specific goals for his defense and really emphasize the turnovers. Hawaii last week was minus seven, uh, so he's got a chance to go on the road, put some pressure on that Rainbow Warrior offense, turn the ball over, get it in the hands of the strength of the Bulldogs, which is Derek Carr and that big play offense. And I think that that's what he's going to try to do is just say, hey, defense, we can improve to help our offense. Look how good they're playing. And imagine how much better we could be if you got the ball a few more times. Hawaii and Norm Chow still looking for that signature win. This would be exactly that. How do they pull off an upset? Well, it goes back to what Fresno wants to do, which is force the turnover. That has been the Rainbow Warriors' Achilles heel this year. They keep shooting themselves in the foot by getting the ball up. It's leading directly to scores and really putting a lot of pressure on that uh, defense. And then they've got to play very sound in the kicking game. I mean, we've seen what Fresno State is capable of doing when they want to return those punts. Isaiah Burst, his ability to return them for scores. The Rainbow Warriors can't put themselves in a bind with poor kickoff coverage and giving that Fresno State offense good field position because they didn't cover or tackle on a punt. Bulldogs looking for their first 4-0 start since 2001. This one kickoff at 9 o'clock Pacific time. It'll be televised by Oceanic Pay-Per-View, streamed on the Mountain West Network, and televised locally in Fresno, California. For Ted Sunquist, I'm Jesse Kurtz. Thanks for logging on to the Mountain West Network.